I'm Mike, and today we're gonna take a look at a pretty new study which has the media echoing how not all plant-based diets are healthy. Some outlets just took the study and wildly misinterpreted it like the Chicago Tribune with, you don't need to go vegan to get the vegan benefit, which you will soon see is a ridiculous misinterpretation when we actually look at what the study found. There are also some problems with the study and more problems with how people are interpreting it. All right, let's go. Here is the study published in the Journal of the American College of Cardiology, or as I like to say, my friend Jacques. Jacques happens to be an expensive date. A subscription to Jacques is 500 plus dollars a year, which is why everybody seems to be going off the cover page. Dr. Kim Williams, you are the president of the American College of Cardiology and a vegan. Come on, vegan passes, please. Thankfully, they gave a lot of information without giving full access, including a couple charts, so we do have a lot to talk about here. The study looked at food questionnaire data from a few studies totaling over 200,000 people. Now, main point here is that they just looked at different foods and their effects on coronary heart disease. As the main author will tell you, right away you can see that they did not actually compare plant-based diets, they did not compare vegan diets, they just looked at the foods. It's also worth emphasizing that they only looked at heart disease here, they did not look at any other diseases. Okay, in this chart they compared servings of what they deemed as healthy plant-based foods to unhealthy plant-based foods and also to animal foods. We can see that as you eat more of either animal foods or unhealthy plant foods, your risk of heart disease goes up by a very comparable amount. These unhealthy plant foods are of course sweeteners and other refined foods, so no way processed foods are unhealthy. If there is any news that people need to hear here, it's that more animal products means more heart disease. And we're talking about meat and dairy and fish and eggs, but with the popular denial of this fact, it's no surprise that that did not make any of the headlines. Now here's another chart that didn't actually look at animal products at all. Instead, they looked at a unhealthy plant foods index, compared that to a healthy plant foods index, and a total plant-based index, which is healthy and unhealthy put together. But contrary to what all these articles would lead you to believe, lumping all of these plant foods together, good and bad, still lowered the heart disease risk. All right, now let's get into my qualms with the study itself. Firstly, they put oil in with healthy plant foods. Now you might be thinking, so it means oil is a health food, right? No, you probably know my views on oil. Depending on the oil, it can raise your LDL or bad cholesterol. It can paralyze your arteries and all oil can spike blood fat, cause lipemia, also known as sludge blood, like spiking your blood sugar with refined sugar. It's common sense. So it is very possible that adding oil to this group actually negated some of the effects of the healthy plant foods. It certainly would if it was a group of vegans they were looking at. Now it is possible that since it was virtually all omnivores, that replacing animal foods with oil could have a benefit because as this study demonstrated, coconut oil can raise your LDL by about 10 points. Well, butter will raise it by about 20. And I have one more oil point before we move on. In my oil video, I constantly get the comment saying, you're crazy, we need oil to survive. And that is absolute nonsense considering that humanity has only been consuming oil in a widespread fashion for a few thousand years. So all of our ancestors before that just died no, we do not require oil. Another issue, as longtime YouTuber Chris Perillo pointed out to me, they lumped potatoes with the unhealthy plant foods. Just potatoes and fries are the same thing. Didn't you hear? French fries are a vegetable. Yes, if virtually all potatoes consumed in your diet are either french fries or other fried potatoes, then it will have a negative effect. But there is no reason to believe that whole unprocessed potatoes are unhealthy. I invite anybody to present negative research on whole potato consumption. Now two problems with interpretations of the study, which are not rare when it comes to the media talking about studies that are even vaguely vegan related. In this case, they took a study that said, quote, however, not all plant foods are necessarily beneficial for health, talking about individual foods and extrapolated that to plant-based diet, the general diet is not necessarily healthy. Now, obviously this is true. If you have a plant-based diet of vodka and deep fried Oreos, you're gonna be pretty unhealthy. 
healthy, but to present this as the conclusion of the study and the findings of the study is just a bit dishonest. And some people have already pointed this out. They've already called them out for this. And I think this was by design because people want to hear how unhealthy plant-based diets can be. They can be, tell me about, tell me about those unhealthy plant-based diets. And people are certainly going to extrapolate from these misinterpretations. We already have meat eaters that are like, ha, vegans are just as unhealthy as me. Again, not what the study was showing. Well, an omnivore eats two sets of unhealthy foods, animal-based foods and unhealthy plant-based foods, a vegan will only be eating one set of unhealthy foods. And I love this quote from the Chicago Tribune. Reducing your intake of animal products while boosting your consumption of fruits, vegetables, and whole grains and continuing to indulge modestly in animal foods can do nearly as much good as a healthy vegan diet. See how all of a sudden a healthier omnivorous diet has become synonymous with a healthy vegan diet? Not what the study said in any way. You can dramatically reverse advanced cardiovascular disease on a healthy vegan diet as clinical trials like this one have shown, but by indulging modestly in processed meats and atherogenic cheeses and other animal foods will not get this result. Especially when you consider the word indulge and take into account America's idea of moderation. No, diseases can be caused by a small amount of animal products. Just a couple slices of bacon spread out over an entire day can increase your risk of diabetes by 51%. Even a really small amount, this study found that eating meat just one to two times a week increased a woman's chance of getting diabetes by 20% and a man's chance of getting diabetes by 40% compared to a vegetarian diet. And I love this quote too. So veganism alone may not help you and could hurt you. Yeah, maybe if people go from an almost fully plant-based diet to a super junky vegan diet, but this is just not the case for people. The current case is that 97% of people in the US do not reach their daily minimum amount of fiber, and the remaining 3% are probably already on a plant-based diet. This is very unlikely most people eat crap, nice try. But some vegans have misinterpreted this too. We have some health only plant-based people saying, ha, you won't get any health benefits, crazy suicidal ethical vegans. That is not necessarily true because just your standard vegan still has lower rates of many diseases than omnivores. The Adventist studies are a simple example. We have vegans who are vegan, not for health reasons, it's religious reasons, being compared to some of the healthiest omnivores on the earth because their religion is telling them to eat less animal products. Still, the Adventist vegans' rates of mortality, their risk of heart disease, cancer, and diabetes were all lower. Yes, it would not be correct to say that a standard vegan is going to see all the disease reversing that has been measured in studies on whole food vegan diets, which just means that people who are just eating vegan ethically are missing an opportunity to be super healthy, but they're not automatically as unhealthy as your average meat eater. Again, looking back at the main study, even lumping those unhealthy plant-based foods with those healthy plant-based foods in that total plant-based index showed a lower risk of heart disease. The study just can't give us any true insights on the comparison between omnivores and junk food vegans specifically, simply because it didn't study that. All the study is really saying is that animal foods are bad for your heart and refined plant foods are too, which is really obvious. Like seriously, tobacco is a plant. But let's just go ahead and make a poison ivy salad. No, I think we all already knew this. So in summary, this is just another study that is largely being twisted into whatever message people are trying to push or whatever message gets clicks. And by and large, it's the age old message of, oh, there's still no reason to be vegan. Go back to your cognitive dissonance slump of animal exploitation, my animal lover who eats animals. You know, a lot of people seem to want the satisfaction of hearing that certain vegan diets are less healthy than certain omnivore diets, but we still have not gotten that yet. That's not what this study is about. Our largest population studies still show that a vegan diet, average or not, is healthier than an average omnivore diet in terms of our leading killing diseases. But yes, be aware there are unhealthy vegan foods, which is why I advocate for a whole food vegan diet because it would be unethical for me to claim all of these amazing disease reversing benefits with just a normal vegan diet. All right, that's it. And in case you were wondering, don't worry, the ebook is coming. Ebooks are a lot of work. 30 recipes is a lot of recipes. Anyway, feel free to like and subscribe, eat a healthy vegan diet, and I will see you next time. Thank you for watching.